So, good afternoon, everybody. Sorry, that's the wrong way of phrasing it. This some of you can be good morning, or so I'm just going to say hello then. Can we cut that and go back? Okay, we've got Colin with me this afternoon, so you've probably all got lots of questions. Welcome to another Woodworking Wisdom. It's Thursday, so far you've had a scroll sort of thing, but we're turning Christmas stuff. I know, I know. It, it gets earlier and earlier each year. So today we're going to do something functional, but the ideal Christmas decoration or present type thing for some of you. Okay, you can hang it on the tree below. Lots of you will have a hand plane. You might have a friend with a hand plane. So a Bailey style plane, you have this out there, that's just cap iron off. And then you want to sharpen the blade, you've got to get to this nice big screw. Let's have a look on there. So I have this massive big screwdriver which is beautiful, I love it, it grips that really nicely. But I expect a few of you have done this thing where you've gone to tighten it, gone and dug it in the side of your hand. Not good, so if you slip with this, it doesn't half hurt. So, I want something a bit smaller, more compact. So, can we have something a bit like that? Small handle, acts as a screwdriver, so if I can find where it goes on there, turn it around, does fit, should fit, and nail it. We can then oh, undo that. So we can make a simple little screwdriver. So anyone that's got a hand plane, this will become really useful little item to have in their toolbox. Allows you to set your plane back up nice and easily, tighten it, doesn't take up too much space, a lot easier and less likely to slip and dig your hand out. So we're done with the plane for a minute. So oh, that's what we're after. We're going to need a few things. Obviously, something is material. That and that. Let's put those just up on there a second. So what we've got there, we have something to make a furrow. I'm just going to get the blade back out the plane for you. So we can try and show you this bit. We're even going to do better than that. I only want one part. So just taking the blade apart, so we can have just really that chip breaker that goes on there. Now I need a piece of metal to fit into that screw. So if you look at the screw you have, you need something that's going to act as the screwdriver bit. So I've cut off a piece. This was actually a part of a angle bracket. So I cut it down with a hacksaw, cut my size, but it's a nice thickness. You then need something as a ferrule. Now, Carl, we never used a bit of copper pipe. This is a piece of wardrobe hanging rail. Round bar out this, your wardrobe. Don't go taking the one out your knees. So this was an offcut I had that just fits over that screw nicely. So it needs to fit over that head. That's quite an important little part. I cut those to length. I have a pipe cutter. I even dressed the ends using the lathe using my round nose scraper. So I can put it in the chuck and clean up the end. Quite easy to do. They look quite nice. Something a bit different. Polished. Looks good. Material then. Let's put those other bits out the way. I've got a piece of boxwood. Just something that we've got out the back that kind of that'll work nicely. The original one that we just showed you was a bit of laburnum. What I have done on this, and I think if I bring it up to there, you can see that cut that I've got in there. Bandsaw cut. Just reach for the pencil. So I've got a cut that runs down through here. Down to there. Now, what does that indicate if I bring it back in play for you? Got the pipe, how deep it needs to be roughly. That also relates to that piece of metal we're going to insert in it. So I've done a bandsaw cut as a straight line. It got me kind of thinking when I went to do this, if you've got something as your log, longer length, and it doesn't have to be log material, it could be square stock, it's actually easier to work with. You can do a straight cut on your bandsaw using the fence. With the bit of boxwood, a bit problematic on how do you hold it. Little things like branch bits on here are fantastic. So if this is the table on the bandsaw, I'm actually looking at those bits. Can I use those as a function to stop it rolling and rocking before I cut them off? And again, maybe keep it a longer length. If you keep it a longer length, you've got more to hold, more stability there. You only want to go down a short length, do that straight cut. So we've done that bit. Let's load our board. Right, let's do some work then. Going to set the lathe up. Now, this is a bit of a weird thing because I've made one. Okay. And then I'm stood in here doing, I'm well, actually just really getting ready to do this. Why don't I make it that way? 
could I not? That involves using the chuck a little bit more, but might be more user friendly to work it with. So we're going to we're going to play around with experiment which way we can hold this and what we can do with it. So in here, I've got that bandsaw cut. I've got an idea if I run across it the opposite way. So the cut down there, parallel with the light bed, that's about my center. I'm looking at halfway. I want to get maximum diameter out of this. So I've got a point there. Now I'm actually going to put that on that pro drive that we used last week, spring loaded. Lots of teeth that will grip it, it won't go in too far. And originally I mounted it the other way around. It causes more aggro trying to fit that barrel because I've got to take the tailstock back out of the way. So on this one, we're going to mount it that way. I can line up my pencil line on that spring, and I'm right on that bandsaw cut. Let's move the banjo up so I've got a bit of room. In the tailstock, I've got that ring centre that I like, because that's going to provide a lot of pressure. And again, now, without too much pressure, if I back off the hand wheel, I can spin this by hand just to see how that centers. So I think, Frederick, you asked last week about the fact of doesn't the spring pressure work against you? Actually, it helps me centralize this and see how it's going to work. Then I can tighten it up, start to lock it in. So really useful as an item. Short to rest. Again, turn over by hand. Another sensible thing. This is a non-uniform shape. Not too big, we can drop the load speed down. So by lowering the speed, going to make it easier to start instead of having to panic and turn the speed down. Safety glasses, put those on. Just looking at where I am, want to come up just a little bit. Again, turn it over. So we're going to go with three quarter inch spindle wrapping gouge. Which one should we have? Let's go down to there. Body stance. Now I've got to get my left foot right outside the lay bed. So right outside the headstock. Right foot is facing towards the tail stock. Handle when I come on, drop the handle down to the floor. We just want to get this down to a nice straight cylinder. We've got that robust rust in here. So we've got a lot of clearance to grip. Finger and thumb, rest on there. Now I can move my body weight from my right foot back to my left foot. I'm going to change my angle, so I take the tool off, I go back to that basic thing, I drop the handle, gently come up, move it along. Oh, just about enough. One maximum diameter out of this. Now, fingertip on the top, feel where the bark edge is gone. That'll be good. I've got a tiny little bit of bark. Let's have a quick look just there. Got that bandsaw cut running up through. We're central on there. Do you think we've taken a bit of material off? We cleaned it up. We're going to take the tool rest in. Now, this is where I'm changing what I was thinking about doing when I laid this out. Do the practice one, which we're going to use the chuck. Oh, let's unwind it off the wall, bring that into play. I'm going to use a small set of O'Donnell jaws. 25 mil ones. I wanted this really for later, but actually I can still hold on this now. It will work nicely for what I'm going to do. So the original one of these, I actually mounted between centers and turned totally down to the size. I'm just setting the calipers up now for the jaw opening as a true diameter. First thing I want to do, clean up that tailstock end to get it flat. We're getting as far as you can go. Then we start with the parting tool handle down low. We do our cut. That'll be good. A little bit more in the middle. Now I reckon, and I'm just going to have a quick look, a little bit square. The jewels that we've got on there have a slight dovetail just on the inside. So, my skew chisel, I'm going to bring into there. Have that little dovetail shape. So all we've done is create that spigot or tenon on here. And to our job to the jaws. Going to want those jaws later. It'll be apparent why we're going to use those again. But that gives me something to grip on on this end. 
Knock out by our finger and thumb. Tap that out. Let's take the tailstock one back out of the way for a second. Chuck can go on there. Chuck key. Bring it out a little bit. Close it down. Let's see where things run. Get a little bit of wobble. Let's just move that up in there. Push equally. The major thing when I do this, I've already got the slot cut. My ferrule. My bit of metal's got to go in. So my slot, actually, and I don't know how clear we'll see on the camera, I'm going to do pencil line there. It gives you an idea of where the slot comes down to. My bit of metal is a little bit shorter. Make sure I get it in the right way, in length. That comes up. Up to there, it's not quite coming all the way up to the end, which is good. I can actually, if I needed to, shorten the piece of metal. We could take a file to it. Or descender maybe in here, have a look in a minute. So we can lose a bit. And just checking the lengths of where things are, really for the ferrule, where well, that's got to go. So my ferrule needs to cover all the way. I've got a little bit of the wood we're going to take off the front is really what I'm looking at. Because screw on the cap and the chip breaker here is quite high in thickness if you look at these. So I need to accommodate that a little bit. So I fit up inside that ferrule. So when it fits on, it gets covered. The screwdriver head's going to be slightly recessed in, if you like. So I'm already thinking about that. Okay, let's have our pencil, because it will give us a good guide of where my line is there. We are going to go beading tool. I want to measure, and this is quick setup guide, if you like. You've got to be quite accurate with this. And people say, how would you measure something like your little ferrule. Internal calipers. Okay, I can set that. So they wind in. Tiny bit of my fingers. Check that. So if you really want to set things up really accurately. Play around a little bit. Bring it in a bit. That's good. Yeah, I'm going to. Just going to bring the tail stock up into play. That's better. So, 3 8 beading tool. We're doing a parting cut. So, we start with the handle low, gently raise it. Getting near now to our diameter. So, I want to start to check. So, we get our ferrule, put it on, see what's going on. Not quite fitting, so whilst it's up there, just going to take a little bit more off. So I can use this end as my guide where that fit needs to be. Just fits over now. So handle down low. Almost working in an arc action. Do those repetitive peel cuts. Yeah. So our pencil line. We'll square it up. Just over my fit diameter, I've still got a tiny step on the end, so move that back out of the way. Doesn't go over yet. Now we've got that little bit of work to square this up. Start, stop, check where things are. Ooh. 
Ooh, I think that will push on quite nicely, though. My metal insert, that's just pushing back inside. Now, what I want to see is the length I have there sticks out just past the bit of chamber. See if I bring it around this way, see if you can see it better. I'll get my pencil because my fingertips are a bit chubby to show you. So it's just clear in the front, overhanging here. There's about a mil and a half. Plus, if you want a bit more depth than that, my ferrule overhangs a little bit on the front. That's good because that's the recess for where the screw head is. We can take the tail stop back. Just going to take the center out there. So on this, we need to bring a little bit off the front. So I bought the tool rest round. We could have used the parting tool, I suppose. I prefer to come in here with the gauge. We're going to get a nice clean finish. Just setting the height. We need to level this off. Tip of the gauge, left thumb, get down the tool rest. Using my thumb as the drive to push this across. So we clean that up again. Just want to see how much overhang I have on the metal strip. So something to go into the screw head we're going to use on that plane. And then where does our crown pipe come up to? So that overhangs our bit of wood. Just done there. I think you can probably see. Let's see if I can get you a little bit nearer. Oop. Back on there. That's better. Let you go. So you can see my gap in here. So the pipe goes up nicely. I don't want to push the pipe on because I know I won't get it off at the moment. And then I've got that little step where the metal's overhanging as well. So that's just clearing the end of it. A couple of mil, nothing too much. So hopefully, see everything on there. Just check that's going to fit on there. I don't want to push it on now. It's nice and tight, which is good. Everything. Tool rest back in. Now, part of the reason for using the O'Donnell jaws on here brings me away from the chap body. Gives me a bit of clearance to get my hands in here so I've got somewhere to work safely without that chuck mass being in the way. So let's just bring the camera angle back just a little bit. So I've got bowl gouge. So my left foot's gone outside the lathe again. I can rest the bevel. It's going to start our shaping. So my boxwood's nice and hard. So I've got to take a few cuts to get to this. We work larger to smaller. Tip of the gouge. Working on one direction at the moment, making that funnel shape. Larger to smaller. I reckon. We can undercut that just a little bit. So we start to reduce our shape. Slowly there, I want to keep that step. That'll probably look a little bit of a mess on here now. A few flare fibres. See, something I might need to get rid of, which I hadn't thought about. I've got to come back a bit. Let's bring that down. I'm going to make a little bead. So we're going to roll it uh, nice and gently over. This is small beading tool. We can roll that round. Create our bead. We get right in behind that bead, so we get nice clean finishing behind there. So the bowl goes right on its side down through there. That's good. So we've got our shape. Now we can do the rounded bit, top of it. So again, the clearance off the chuck body is so important here for my left hand. I can rest the bevel. So I have to do round bit. Gently push round. Blend it in now. I just want to have a look because a little bit of vibration up on here, a bit of bark edge. There's what I can feel. So we need to lose a little bit of diameter.
Now I can also come back around the other side. So we roll it over. So I've got the bevel rubbing. Gently come up the handle, we find the cut. Pull my shape round. Again, I've got to stop before we hit the chuck. Now just feeling the shape a little bit more. Careful up to here, We've got that nice speed, we don't want to drive into it. A shape in there, slight fluffy edge just on the back of there. So I could go back in with the tip of the gouge, I'm going to use point of my skew chisel just to clean that up. Okay. Got to push and go back out the way. Bring the air in. I'm going to turn the extractor on. A little bit of a brighter so I don't think we're going to need some 150. We're going to go 240, 400. So we cleared the banjo out the way. Sand as much as we can. We'll take the speed down so we're running a little bit slower. Now 800. We'll sand our bead. Looks nice and clean, so 400. Okay, let's have a quick look. So up to there, got that funny shape. We've still got a bit to clean up. I'm just stretching around to reach the bit of metal. I'm going to push these in in a second. If I push it in now, I know it's difficult when I did the one the other day, push it in and get it back out. But that will fit in my slot. Oh, fair out. Again, if I push it on now, I'm going to use the lathe. We can push it on. Hopefully push that back out. It fits nice and tight. Possibly too tight, who knows? So from there, now originally when I did the first one, I turned it between centers. So you could do that, but it makes it difficult to adjust anything on the, the top end. So take any material off the top. So I kind of thought, well, I'm using the O'Donnell jaws anyway to hold this bit. Why not just use the O'Donnell's to hold the whole thing? Put a step up on the end. See what happens here, a bit of wobble. I play around and get things so they line up. Bit of a puzzle and get a bit of play. That's better. Again, just a little bit. There we go. Do you always get yeah, it can and I've also got that problem there. I've got that cut down the centre. It will flex a little bit. So I can close on that bandsaw cut. I don't want loads and loads of pressure, enough to hold it. So we're going to clean up that top edge, get rid of that spigot or tenon we've created. So tip of the gouge again. Extend our shape round, slowly coming up. As I've just said, I haven't over tightened the chuck at the moment, trying to be nice and light. I've got that cut down the middle, which is the bandsaw cut. I don't want too much pressure. But we're going to draw the fibres in a lot. Something really brittle if the grain direction changes, there's the risk you could actually possibly crack it. So numerous cuts just to remove this, get it back to. So I took the gouge again. Left thumb doing a lot of work to guide it, push it round. 
continue our shape. It's nice and clean there at the moment. Just going to sand that. I've got a couple of other things I'll probably do to it. So I can blend our shape in. Work round it. Again, those jewels give me good access to do this, but. Okay. Let me just do, so I'm just going to do this as a cut. So we've got the bowl gouge. We could put handle nice and low. Got the flute dead up right, 12 o'clock. Got a half round in. Now, Colwyn's got his hand up, so let's do this bit. What have you got, Colwyn? Just a, a quick question here from Cliff. He's saying, could you put a piece of card in the slot to make it easier to fit it into the chuck? It could do. You could actually just stop it moving. That would be good. I hadn't thought that. Nice idea. Um, I could possibly put my piece of metal in, but I'm worried if I push it in, I'm not going to get it back out. That's my worry. All right, so we've got a little hollow in there. So we're going to go with a little decorating elf. So what does this have? This has rotary ball on it. So a burr, might be getting a Dremel. I don't know if it's going to be worth me. Let's have a look, bring that in a bit more. So you can see we've got, there. it's got a little bearing inside, helps us spin. Bring Taurus back, checking angles and stuff now to make sure we get support because we've got to get a leverage. So we can play around with speed on this a little bit as well. So I'm above center, nice and firm. Okay, get a pattern in there. It could go back in. I reckon see if we can get it deeper. Nothing like choosing a nice hard bit of boxwood to try and do this with. That looks quite good. I'll show you that in a second when we've done there. What do I do on that one? To rest down. So I'm more level towards the centre now. Point my skew chisel. Help define those a little bit. We could have tiny bead in the centre. So this is more decoration than possibly anything else. In saying that, I found it grip nicer in the palm of my hand with the other one. That's quite nice. So we've got bristle brush, short bristled natural hair. You can use it as a sander in reality. Brush over. Clean those wispy fibres up. All right. Show you those sailor. Brush that on. That bring the colour of our box without using the lathe really to hold this. Just to spin the lathe by hand. We can wipe off the excess. Gotta be careful with where I've got my pattern because the blue paper towel definitely does get into that. So we clean that back out. Okay, at the moment, let's have a quick yeah, pattern. I'm gonna highlight the pattern in a minute, I think. See what we can do. First stage I thought of with this. We'll put the chuck back on in a second, but I wanna move that out of the way. With the sealer back out of the way as well. 
pigtail really thrown in. Nice firm push with that. We did some of this last week with all that chuck holding stuff. So polishing muck, pigtail arbor, light compound. At least we've got a white wood, pale wood for boxwood. We can buff it up. First stretch. Change our mop. A little bit of current Uber wax. We're running about 1800 RPM. So we can buff. Take them up, take that off. We want our knockout bar back. Confuse the chuck holding device back into there. Use some black wax, tiny little bit, because we can then hopefully. Now, if I was at home, I'd actually probably use ebonizing lacquer. I haven't got time for it to dry on here, so I wanted to show you a little bit. Maybe we can do a bit of this. I've got to clean it up in a minute. Can use a brush by hand. Not too much that side. The ebonizing lacquer would be nicer and then sand it. I just want to highlight that texture a little bit for you so you guys can see what's going on. A bit dark around the edges. Okay, let's have a quick look on Ray Cowan. So you can see we can put that in, get a dark colour, just highlights it. Uh, can't go back with a blue paper towel, rag could be quite good, but it will just add a bit of colour and texture. Adds a bit of grip on the palm of your hand is what I like with that as an idea. Come on then, Colin, what have you got? So yeah, Lawrence was just asking, is the little plate that fits inside for the screw, is it hardened no. in any way? No, nope. just purely still. I cut it off an angle bracket that we had. It's one of those weird things I kind of thought about. There, does it need to be hardened? You're not giving it that much pressure. You're not twisting it that much. It's been supported nicely by the wood either side. So I didn't really want anything too hard or brittle in there. One of the risks can be if you harden it, then you've got to do the other bit as well. Is the plane screw hardened? Okay, so let's put that down there. We're going to take, which way should we go with this? Close those jaws right down. That'd be good. Let's see if we can start pushing things together a little bit. Need the banjo out of the way. We just need to bring the tail stop back up. Oh, what have we got on the wall? Cup. So I can use that conical centre. Part of the multi headset. At the moment, my aim is to push on that crown ferrule. So I can use the lathe just to push that in. Look nice and simple, doesn't it? So I realise my bit of metal now is going to need a little bit of work, but we'll see. I'm hoping it'll be all right. So what you could do with six hands. Now, my bit of metal I've just located and got it started. I've got to put it so it doesn't line up with the jaws. That makes sense. So we're using the solid area of the jaws. Ooh, 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 ooh. Now, when I pushed in the other week, it slid in nicely. Taking a bit. Ooh, backing a bit. It's coming out the side. Look. Ugh. It's not helpful. Bent my ferrule now. I see what it did. 
twisting it as it's best, pushing in, it's not going in squarely. Oh. You see the ideas or the problems? Quite going in my gap there. I can see what he's done. It's pinched it together a little bit. So when I pushed the one in last week, guys, I used the bench with my vice. A bit easier. All right. So ideally, you need to push it down in. I've twisted and buckled the side when trying to do it on the lathe. It'd be easier to do it with vice. Push it in properly. So it'll go down in. Push it in nice and squarely as well. All right, you need to control it when you're pushing. On here, I can't quite grip it on the chuck tool that's dropping in just that little bit. It's marked my ferrule, so I need to swap the ferrule, get another one. I've got a bag of these. So, Cohen, I think really we're pretty much up to there. Now, I'm just going to grab the one I made last week, but my practice one. So, nice item. Something that you can use for all your hand plants. Let's show, show you, um, I've already lost one. So, Steph, who does lots of our photos around here, some of you, you know, we've, she's been on the videos occasionally, done stuff. She came down and goes, can, can I have it? Why? She said, I wanted to do my camera tripod shoes up that fit onto the bottom of the camera, tighten them up, you have a similar size screw. Okay. It's quite a nice item for that sort of thing. So, fits onto that screw, easy to do up. Quite a nice Christmas present, something small, delicate. Once they start using it, you're never gonna never gonna want to be without it. All right. So nice short sort of session today. Um I did mammoth ones last week, lots and lots of work. So hopefully you've enjoyed this. Colin, I don't think you've got any more questions. You haven't got your hand up. Nice quiet afternoon for me. You said we're gonna be hectically busy on Christmas stuff and everything else. They're all shopping. So hopefully you enjoyed it. We will be back next week with more Woodwork and Wisdom. If you like this, subscribe it, share it with your friends, the thumbs up, all those things. So thank you very much for joining us. We will see you then. Goodbye.